YouTube, what's up, what's happening? Got you guys a quick and easy video on how to airbrush blue fire. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, first, let's go over a few things you're gonna need. Obviously, you're gonna need your airbrushes, and we have two airbrushes here that I'm gonna be working with. Uh, we're gonna need Createx Opaque White, uh, as well as Transparent Deep Blue, Transparent Caribbean Blue, and Transparent Bright Blue. Uh, it helps to have a reducer, a reducer and cleaner uh, to when we swap out colors. Uh, obviously, or not obviously, but you are also going to need some kind of a curve set. And you can obviously cut your own out. Um, there's no problems with that. Uh, I also sell this specific set on my website, www.mikesbrush.com. And these get shipped out to your door. They're ready to use and they're designed to work together to produce really good looking flames. So if you're interested in that, you can always get those there or you can try your hand at cutting your own. As well as we have a black canvas here that we're gonna be working on. Um, traditionally, we, whenever you do blue flames, it works best on a black surface, but you could also do them on colors and whatnot once you kind of cut accustomed to the process. But for today, we're going to be doing it on black just so I could show you how to do it, how to get that nice contrast on black. All right, guys. So what I've done is mixed in about half white, half reducer mixed here in our airbrush. And I'm going to take our biggest uh, cut out stencil here. So with our biggest curves and whatnot, and I'm just going to start on this corner here and we're going to build flames up towards the middle. Right. So I just want a nice little nice little batch of flames coming up from this corner going this way right so that's what we're going to do and i'm just giving the airbrush a good shake make sure that paint gets nice and mixed up in there a little spray get them out and so generally you want to use your edges of your airbrush here and you want to start by not only outlining the edge right hit that edge a little softly but also bring your flames out from that edge, right? And that's what's going to give us our basis for our flames here. Now you could start off, and usually I like going in just, you know, freehanding in a little area or some, some little flames. Um, and this will give us a good idea of where we want to build our flames, where we're going to go with it, and where we want to go next. So. Now using the, our little freehand area here that we've built up, you know, this is where we want the flames. I've built up my kind of my area, put a few little lines in, and now we're just going to use the opaque white plus our curve here to start accenting some of those lines that we made here. So not every corner here, not every uh, edge has to be drawn out. You know, some you can just hit the edge, but some maybe you want to bring it up. You don't have to just bring it out straight out from it. You could kind of go at a curve with it like this, you know. So, again, just kind of working our way around. And this first layer, it's okay if you make mistakes. I would not even worry about it too much. If you make a few little mistakes here and there, that is okay. You can turn those mistakes into cool, cool looking flames. So as you can see, I'm just kind of building it up using those, those same lines that I used. Bringing them out from there. Here, kind of get lost in there. 
Um, this is just the first layer, so it's, it's okay if it doesn't look like your greatest flame job ever, because we're just gonna go over this now with some deep blue. So I mixed up deep blue, about half and half again, and we're just gonna go over the white with our deep blue here. Now you kind of want to stay on the white. You don't want to just go off and, you know, into other areas because you will be able to see it, even though it's kind of a really dark color. You just kind of want to stick to, you know, going over your flames and coloring them in. So once you've let that blue dry up a little bit, right, the deep blue, we're going to come back in with our second curve. And again, some opaque white. I'm going to give it another little shake up here. Make sure it's nice and stirred up in there. And, spray, you know? and then we're going to start building up off of these designs again. Using the same designs that we already have on there, we're just going to extend it. Maybe that flame connects over here somewhere. There's another flame coming in. See that? We're connecting that to there. Maybe right up in here, there's another one. Again, you want to be a little bit random, but you also want to connect them, right? You don't want everything to just kind of be off on its own. A whole bunch of separate flames. Like that doesn't make much sense. So you want to connect them up together. Freehand in there. Let's add some nice little lines. Kind of coming out. Just start working your way around. Maybe the other way. See how all these are going that way. Maybe add one coming in the other way, like this. Get a freehand around it. You know. You see these free hands that we did before? This one doesn't have an accent. Maybe now we add, we connect it to the one we did before. All right, maybe one last one up here. Just to connect everything together. Something like that. And now we're just going to load up some bright blue. Again, we're going to reduce the bright blue. This time we're going to use about three parts paint, one part reducer. So the bright blue is a little bit less thick. So it flows a little more easier. And you also want it to cover, but not to um, completely drown out the deep blue. All right, so I have my bright blue loaded up. And again, I'm just going to go over these designs with the bright blue. And what you'll notice is the bright blue kind of doesn't go over the deep blue. It only goes over the white, and wherever it lands on the deep blue, it kind of stays that deep blue. And that's what you're looking for. You want to build up those different color separations with different tones. Gonna let that dry and we're gonna come back in with the opaque white once more all right guys so we're almost at the finish line here and now I'm just gonna take the finest cut stencil here which is the, the smallest of all and we're just gonna add some final accents to this and really bring in maybe the edges and and whatnot of the flame so again we just want to build up like maybe this little area here, you see it kind of coming in, but it doesn't really have an edge. 
Let's give that baby an edge right there, bring it out freehand. You know, something in, up in here too, maybe. Let's... I like calling this like building the girth of the flame, you know, because you're building it like the center part usually. And this is what normally what sticks out the most is this last layer. Um, and this is a six layer flame, right? So we do one layer of white and then blue and white and blue and white and blue and white. And we're doing six total layers. Um, if you count them up. And you could obviously do more layers with more colors, as many layers as you want. But what I have noticed is that after six layers, it's you're kind of like in the land of diminishing returns. Um, they really don't look that much better. And uh, honestly, you might end up end with a really ugly looking fire. Uh, just super busy, too much going on kind of fire. And uh, yeah, you don't really want that. You want a nice clean looking fire. With you know, where it's random, but not so random that it just looks like, I don't even know what to call it, but strings, fire-colored strings is kind of what I would say. Some, some fires I have seen out there are pretty brutal, where you could just tell they did not know where to stop. So it's good to know a good stopping point and just build up the flames. You don't want to overdo it, and that's kind of where I'm at. Make sure you add a little freehand in there. Just like that. And that's the last layer of white. We're going to come back in, cover that with the Caribbean blue, and we'll be done. All right, so we have our Caribbean blue all mixed up. Again, it's about three parts paint, one part reducer. Um, and we're just going to go over the white. Nice and light. Now the Caribbean blue is a really light color, especially when you reduce it. So you might not even notice it's too much of a change. But it's a really nice light blue. And this will tie it all together. Give those flames a really nice depth. shading and color differences and there you go let that dry up and we have our blue fire